So we've just about leathered this bellows. This is the animal glue, which is the traditional stuff. That's an electric glue pot. And um, so we'll just go over to... Um, what I'm going to do next, because I've got to keep waiting for things to dry and I don't want to waste time. We've got two gussets to go. And I'll just kind of show the edge. So that's one of the gussets on the lower section. On the upper section, we haven't put the next one in. So that's the lower one. And then what happens at the bottom edge, just there, there's a circle goes on. And the same applies at that top edge. So, lots of leathering, lots of stripping, lots of time. And it's all propped up on wedges and all kinds of things. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, at that end, the blower inlet goes. So, we're going to make a big alteration. So, what happens is, there is a plate which is screwed onto the bellows, that's what it's called. So, like we've got a hole there, a plate goes over there. In fact, it's, what, it's a trunk that goes on there to the uh, lower keyboard soundboard, the great soundboard. But they are terminated in what is called, is called a plate. So that's the bit with the four screws. So the way they had it, the blow was in the basement of the church. We left that behind, wasn't interested. Um, hadn't time to pick it up. It would have meant going back with another hire van, you know, two men, half a day, um, 100 and something miles worth of fuel. And we just bought a second hand blower, which was a better one. It's a BOB, which is British Organ Blowers, not the name of the organ. And they're still at Coleman Street, Derby. It's now Bob Stevenson. Um, so, the way they have it, when it was a KC blow, which was one of Cousins' subsidiaries of Lincoln, uh, is they have a kind of all-metal construction of the trunking between the um, blower and the inlet. So, what you have, I mean, the bellows obviously is propped up at full height at the moment, but if you can imagine, you're not going to norm you wouldn't normally have it anything like as high as that. That wouldn't be normal operating condition. So you have to have a control valve which shuts off the inlet. The blower carries on running. It doesn't shut down the blower. The blower carries on running, but it shuts off the ability for the blower to put more wind, as the air is called, into the organ. So you have the centrifugal fan, and then in between the bellows and that blower, you have a control valve. Now the way they do it um, with the KC blower is with the butterfly valve in a metal trunk. We'll go over to the storage uh, shed and I'll show you what I mean. If you can hear me over the tannoy speaker, we've got a pulley and you've got that butterfly valve, which is in the closed position. And then you've got a bit of what well, looks like drain pipe. No, not really think that's the way to do it, but that's the way they've done it. Um, which, of course, ultimately goes to the blower. I don't like this arrangement because you can't see where the valve is. And actually, that valve's stuck right now. Now, we've had this in storage here, what, 10 years? And I've no doubt we could strip it down and lubricate it and put it back into operation. But I still don't like it, so I'm going to be making a brand new, more traditional type of valve. So as the bellows rises, there is a weight somewhere on the floor there. There is a weight. Yep, yeah, there it is. There is a weight. And that goes on top of the bellows over that pulley to the left. And then as the bellows rises, that butterfly valve closes and it will be sprung to the closed position. So if the, if the, it's a wire uh, cable, if the cable snapped, it would shut. So in fault condition that valve would shut and stop the um, the air going into the blower, uh, from the blower into the bellows and so you're not going to end up with the with the bellows going up and up and up. You may remember inside the bellows uh, there are two emergency escape valves so if the bellows went be, 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 uh, beyond a, a predetermined height then the cords would, uh, would pull those valves open 
Uh, we've not done all that yet because we're still putting the bellows together. So we're going to do a different type of valve which is more of a sluice gate. The best ones are called roller blinds and they are just like you imagine there's a roller and a blind and it, it shuts down the, the wind supply by unfurling that blind. But they're a bit complicated to make and I'll rather do the sluice gate one um, which I will show you. We're going to build that from scratch. So this would have gone in the 1950s so it's not like I'm altering something from 1864 because I'm not. But the thing about the kind of control valve I'll be doing is that you can see where its position is. You can't see where the position is on that. And the fact that being an all metal construction, often if it's in a church, it's going to be very damp environments. And exactly what's happened to that is going to happen. But it has failed um, in the shut position. But I will just add it was working when we took the organ out. So we'll go back over to the chapel and um, we'll start putting one together. Okay, so there it is uh, on the rather temporary bench of a pasting table. So what we're going to do, this camera tripod is not very good. It was my late uncle's, but I haven't got the heart to replace it. It doesn't lock in very many positions. And I think I wouldn't really want to use it with more than a flash gun on it normally, but there you go, sentimental reasons. It's not the normal one we use. Um, so, as you can see, there's a rubber gasket which went to that metal um, pipe which had the control valve. And then, if I turn that round, I've just removed... Is that going to stay put? No, it's not. I've just removed the gasket material, which is leather, uh, from where the screws are. I knew there'd be some hidden screws, which screw the plate to the trunk. So I've taken those out, and now we're going to split the two apart. So, that's it. The plate is now removed from that piece of trunking. And that saves me, make, this is made out of mahogany, so it's been very nicely made at the time when it would have been made in the 1950s. And there's nothing wrong with that piece of trunking. We may be using it on this organ, we may be using it on another. So, we're gonna start building control valve and for that doing that I've got myself a sheet of plywood which is external type because I don't want it to if this ended up ever in another building in a damp environment what I don't want it to do is start parting so we could join some real wood together and on the other hand we could do what exactly what we're doing and make one out of plywood so the idea is, i can just put that down like that. We've got to cut this piece of wood so we can still get to those screws. So it's got to be the right width. And it's got to be a height at which we have a, it's what can we use to make it for our imagination? Because until I do this, you may not know what I'm on about. So we're going to cut an identical hole in this piece of plywood. And this will be mounted to the plate. And then we'll have another one and they'll be about an inch apart. So we're putting some timber around it. This will all be leathered on the inside so there's no air leakage. And we'll pretend that this off-cut piece of wood covered in glue is our control valve. So with the hole there, when it shuts, it'll cover the hole. When it opens, it'll move up here and let the air in. So we'll start putting that together and then you'll see what I mean. So this can't call the stays put on a tripod. What we've now done is to cut the piece of plywood to size. Then I've marked through where the screws go. And then we're actually going to use some shorter screws. I do struggle with, but these are inch and a half tens. And the ones which we'll be using are inch and three quarter tens. These are brass screws, which don't have the strength of steel. But this is a template thing. What I don't want to do is to put the 
final screws, in which is the ones which came out, we'll overhaul those and put those back. So we've drilled pilot holes. And the other thing we need to make sure is we always put grease on screws. And I've made sure that the countersinks are, are done. So we'll do those. And this is so that I can screw it down and then mark it. So these screws are just temporary, just borrowing them for now. I wonder where there's a screwdriver. So I'm not over tightening these as I say, it's temporary. I've made sure this is square. So I just want to mark it on the inside. And that's all that that was about. But I didn't want to move it to move while I was marking it. So now we've got that will drill the corners and just cut it out with a jigsaw. No one's ever going to see in here again. It could say Tango 21 was here and nobody would be the wiser. So there we have it with a slot cut out with a jigsaw. And so the next thing we're going to do is to make the corresponding one exactly the same size to make up the sandwich. So next day, Yesterday evening we went to uh, Wicks and got some, what's this, 15 by 21 millimeter finished wood. And the idea is that we're going to get ourselves a 15 millimeter depth. These are going to be sanded, they're going to be screwed. We're going to be using three quarter inch eight screws, which of course will be slotted as is required on organs. They're going to be drilled and they're going to be clearance drilled. They must never be body bound. I look at uh, uh, builders putting in, uh, in, in things and the screws are just forced in and body bound. In the organ building, it must be clear of it going through the material just, and just binding to what it's going into. So I can demonstrate with these temporary screws that these pull in and out through the holes quite readily. And that's how it has to be. So we're going to do that and then we're going to make our shutter which goes up and down in that. We've already made the lid, if that's what it's called. So then we'll have a sandwich like that. It's like blue peach, isn't it? But I haven't got one that I prepared earlier. So I'm going to screw this together. It's going to be glued and screwed and we'll use modern PVA adhesive between uh, the strips I won't glue the top surface, we'll put a gasket on that so that it's got serviceability. Right, so with a bit of leftover floorboard, I've cut this, we've taken the groove out of there, still got the tongue on there, well just. I've planed that side because it was too thick by about four millimeters. That's plain, sanded. That should fit in there without any obstruction. So the idea now, is that that can go up and down and open and close the seat. Especially if I get this the right way on. I think that's the right, the right way on. Yeah, that's the right way on. So I'll just do that tightly. Good. So, I think the next thing to do is we're actually going to drill some holes in, in this and we're going to load it with lead so it's got some weight to it because that might not be enough weight to drop 
and shut off that wind supply. So it's loaded with weight. So we're going to do that next. Mr. Chippy usually likes doing this. Okay, so moving forwards with this, that's now loaded with lead. So that's got some weight to it. And there's a chamfer on that edge because that can cause wind noise if you don't do that. So the next thing we're going to do is apply what we call black lead. What do they call it? Well, it's graphite, which is um, suspended in methylated spirit. It's about 97 pounds a tin. But it means that the surface is lubricated. If you wonder why it's blackened there, the uh, lead caused it to catch fire. Not surprisingly. So let's hope that I've shaken this sufficiently over the last five minutes. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a glove on for this because I know what it's like to get off. So hopefully that's just about in the frame there. So I could use a rag, but we're going to use this piece of kitchen roll. I think that could have done with a bit more shaping, to be honest. We're going to do several coats of this. We're going to do the edge, which has been sanded, just in case you didn't realise that. We'll do the edge here. So I'll do about three coats of that and the idea then is that that is going to slide very easily. We're also going to do the inside of the, of the lid shall we call it as well. Okay so I don't, can't remember where we left this but what I've now done is to mount our new piece on the existing trunk. just like that. So that's all screwed on and there's a leather gasket round. So the other part of this has now had the black lead applied. I don't know whether I showed you the black lead, it's um, graphite suspended in methylated spirits. And so now, when we've got the dust out of here, that's the bit which will go up to the bellows. This is the shutter which is loaded with lead on a cord which is, the knot is hidden in there and that should last quite a long time because it's nylon. So now then, the idea is that that's going to screw to that. And obviously I'm not going to offer it up uh, like that. So that's going to be then like that. So we've got the blower going in there, we've got this end going to the bellows, we're going to screw these two together and this will neatly open and close if I get it in the viewfinder as easily as that. So we'll pause the camera and we'll screw this together. Right, 
so we rejoin this uh, control valve. So I've been doing another gasket. So this time it's around this edge. So unlike when we're doing the bellows where you've got the rough side glued down, because you've got a shiny side to the leather, and you've got a rough side to the leather. So when we're doing the bellows, you'd be gluing down the rough side. But on this case, we glue down the shiny side. So I've scored it with the knife, so the glue to, to key the surface to enable the glue to hopefully stick to it. And then we're using the rough side, so it needs to be used to bed. So it's being used as bedding leather in this case. Now we've drilled a lot of holes in this to screw the two pieces together. So we've got all these holes drilled, and what we've now got to do is we have got to make sure there's holes in that leather because when we put the screws through we don't want them to to kind of wreck the leather and screw it up. I did these, this about 40 minutes ago and I think the glue will be dry sufficiently to do this. So what we'll do is we're going to now set the blow lamp going. So I'll prop this up on something sensible like a biscuit tin which isn't here. We have got a biscuit tin. Andy can we oh I'll on a round got my assistant Andy today. That's a screw tin for the jobs. The job screw tin. We'll just have it on there. Just move the camera around a fraction. So as you know we've got holes and what we're going to do is actually burn through those holes with a blow lamp. So what we're going to do is, with the blow lamp, we're going to heat up this 16 gauge phosphor bronze rod. And then when I poke it through, hopefully it will burn its way through. Not got two out of that, so we'll reheat it. Another one done. It's another one done. We managed to get two out of that one. I'm not going to get three out of it, so do it. Heat it back up. I'm not going to spend your whole day doing this. Once we've done this rod, we'll pause the video again. Another one, we're doing run a roll here. Another one. Nope. Alright, I'll come back to the video when we've done all these. Okay, so we're just about there with this. So I've removed the old uh, leather which is used as a gasket. So we're putting leather gaskets throughout every part of this. So you'd have seen the what uh, the, the first bit was glued and screwed. I'll just move the uh, monitor so I can actually see what I'm showing you. So the first bit's glued and screwed, the second bit has got a leather gasket between, so this can be taken apart and easily repaired, for example, should the cord snap. And then it's all screwed to the trunk, it's all screwed to the plate which will go onto the organ. So that's all being done, there's a gasket between there and it's all been coated with one coat of white polish which is like French polish but uh, lighter so that's all it's going to get as far as the uh, protection of the wood goes so slotted screws throughout the construction and the last thing we're going to do they've got a gasket round here again of leather 
and this is would have gone on in the 1950s and um, it, you know it has actually rotted so it's time to change it this is a bit of an expensive and extravagant way to do it but what we're going to do is to put a, a piece on like that and then cut a letterbox in that we're going to do that now so the final thing will be to do this so I'll just put a piece of newspaper on there and my assistant will pass me the glue pot. Okay, so there we have it with the gasket. This is the next day. The glue's dried under pressure and we've burnt the holes in rather than cutting them out like they'd done in the past. I said the blower would have gone in originally in the 1950s. We abandoned that. We're putting a different blower to it. Another 1950s one, but a B.O.B., a British organ blower uh, from Derby. So um, we're now going to put this on the bellows because we're rigging it up on the work table um, rather than putting it in the building frame we're going to be connecting the blower up with this control valve on the work table and we will be as soon as the inverter arrives we're going to be able to uh, put the blower on and make sure there's no wind leaks on the bellows because there'd be nothing worse than putting it against that back wall and discovering that there's wind leaks so we need to be mindful of that and make sure the thing's going to be working properly so the next thing i'm going to put this on with three original screws and one brand new one so we were a screw short so i bought some from this gentleman the vintage screw company well I thought we'd got every size in stock, but for some reason we hadn't got this one. Why are we missing one? I don't know. What can happen is that somebody could have put a wrong size screw in at the time. So when I come to look for four screws the same, there's actually only three screws the same. And so we end up thinking we're a screw short when we're not. However, any unused screws go into stock, get sorted and get reused. So there we go, that's now screwed into position and I'll just move the camera. So there we go, with the uh, bellows still propped up, this is where we're going to end the video. So the control valve is there and we know that it, was, it will now be in the closed position. So when the installation happens, There'll be a pulley about there, and as the bellows rises, the shutter drops, and as the pellow, as the pellows, the bellows drops, that will open. And it won't make any noise because it won't hit either the top or the bottom. And if it does, we'll add some felt. So there we go. One control valve from scratch. And ready to connect the blower on a flexible hose into that inlet and we've taken away what about eight inches of pipe and we've only kind of that's quite slim isn't it it's only about one and a half inches wide and uh, so that, that is the finish it is um, uh, white polish and it's just one coat just to protect the wood there's no need to paint things like that because i'm happy with the way it's been made so thanks for watching the next part of our, uh, I nearly said Conica, that was the previous organ, uh, of our Fulton Andrews 1864 uh, pipe organ restoration. Thanks for watching.